Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The set of positive integers is infinite. Okay, now before we get into the proof, let's get some context. To start, we're going to say that the natural numbers includes zero. And the positive integers is just the natural numbers not including zero. Now, for each natural number n, we define the following set. We define the set in to be the set of all positive integers less than or equal to n. Now, let's describe what we mean by infinite. Well, given a set A, we say that A is finite if the following is true. We say A is finite if there exists a natural number n such that there exists a bijection from i n to a. Now it turns out that this natural number n is the only natural number that satisfies this condition. So it's unique. Right, and we've proven that the natural number n that satisfies this condition is unique. And so every finite set can be assigned to a unique natural number that satisfies this condition. And we call this natural number the number of elements in A. And we denote it as this. And otherwise, if there doesn't exist a natural number that satisfies this condition, we say that A is infinite. Now, in proving this, we're going to rely on two facts regarding finite sets. The first is the following. Given any two sets C and D, if D is finite and there's a bijection from C to D, then C is also finite and the number of elements in C and D are equal. And here's how the second fact goes. Given any two sets C and D, if D is finite and C is a subset of D, then C is also finite and the number of elements in C is less than or equal to the number of elements in D. And second, if C is not equal to D, then the number of elements in C is strictly less than the number of elements in D. Now for reference, I'll call this theorem 1, and I'll call this theorem 2. So now, let's get into the proof. Now, before we prove this, we're actually going to prove a preliminary result. And that is, for any two sets, A and B, if a is a subset of B, A is not equal to B, and there's a bijection from A to B, then B is infinite. So, we're trying to prove a statement about any two sets. So, give me any two sets. I'll call them A and B. And with A and B, we're trying to prove if these three things are true, then B is infinite. So let's suppose that these three things are true. Our whole goal is to prove that B is infinite. Well, let's suppose for a contradiction, we instead have that B is finite. Now, since B is finite and there's a bijection from A to B, well, we can apply theorem one. If we take C and D to be A and B respectively, well, B is finite, that's what we have here, and there's a bijection from A to B, that's what we have here. So, by theorem 1, we can conclude that A is finite, and the number of elements in A is equal to the number of elements in B. But we can also apply theorem 2, right? If we take C and D to be A and B, respectively, well, we know that B is finite, that's what we have right here, and we have that A is a subset of B. That's what we have right here. So by theorem two, both one and two are true. In particular, two is true. So if A is not equal to B, then the number of elements in A is strictly less than the number of elements in B. But we know that A is not equal to B. That's what we have right here. So by two, we can conclude that the number of elements in A is strictly less than the number of elements in B. So, 
we have that the number of elements in A is equal to the number of elements in B, and the number of elements in A is less than the number of elements in B. These two facts give us a contradiction. Our assumption that B is finite led us to a contradiction, so we must instead have that B is infinite. Right, so that proves our preliminary result. And we're going to use it to prove that the set of positive integers is infinite. So now, let's prove this. And to do so, assume for a contradiction that the set of positive integers is finite. Now, since the set of positive integers is finite, what that means is by definition that there exists a unique natural number n such that there is a bijection from i n to the set of positive integers. But by definition of i n, i n is a subset of the positive integers. We can also show that i n is not equal to the set of positive integers. And to see how, well, since n is a natural number, surely n plus 1 is a positive integer. However, n plus 1 is greater than n, so n plus 1 does not satisfy this condition. So n plus 1 is not an element of i n. So we see that i n and z plus do not contain exactly the same elements. So they can't be equal. So what we see here is i n is a subset of z plus, i n is not equal to z plus, and there is a bijection from i n to z plus. So if we take a and b here to be i n and z plus respectively, well, these three conditions hold, therefore z plus is infinite. So what have we shown here? So what have we shown here? Well, under the assumption that z plus is finite, we also have that z plus is infinite. So we've reached a contradiction. And so because our assumption that z plus is finite led us to a contradiction, we must instead have that z plus is infinite. And so we have now concluded that z plus is infinite. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.